All right, welcome to The Explainer. Today, we're diving deep into a really important paper from 2023 by Sheng et al. They took on one of the most persistent debates in pediatric orthopedics, which is, what's really the best way to pin a supracondylar humerus fracture? Okay, so here's our game plan. We'll quickly set the stage with a dilemma, then get right into the stability safety trade-off. We'll look at the hard data on complications and functional outcomes, talk about the mini open technique, and then wrap up with the author's conclusion and, just as important, the grade of their evidence. So let's start with the problem itself. We all see these fractures constantly. They're bread and butter for any pediatric orthopedic practice. The real debate isn't about whether to operate, it's all about the how. Right, and to be crystal clear, we're talking about the displaced ones, the Gartland type 2s and 3s. For these, we all know the drill, closed reduction and percutaneous pinning. That part's not up for debate. But the whole controversy, the whole reason for this meta-analysis, boils down to a single question. What's the optimal pin configuration? And that leads us straight to the heart of the matter. This is the classic trade-off we all grapple with every time we're in the OR with one of these cases. Are you going to prioritize biomechanical stability? Or are you going to prioritize safety? So here it is, laid out plain and simple. On one hand, you've got medial lateral pinning, MLP. Biomechanically, it's the more robust construct. We know this. But on the other hand, there's lateral only pinning, LP. And the big selling point there is safety, right? You're completely avoiding that medial pin and therefore the ulnar nerve. It's the classic stability versus nerve safety dilemma. So what does the pool data actually show? Okay, let's get into the numbers. What did Singh and their team actually find? They pulled together a pretty substantial body of evidence. We're talking 19 randomized controlled trials, almost 1,300 fractures. So this gives us a pretty good look at how this trade-off actually pans out in the real world. So first up, stability. And yeah, the data absolutely backs up the biomechanical theory. With medial lateral pinning, the relative risk for loss of reduction was 0.70. To put that in perspective, that's a 30% reduction in the relative risk of the fixation failing, and critically, that's a statistically significant finding. So, point for MLP on stability. But of course, there's always a but. Here's the flip side. The data also confirms the safety argument against MLP. The relative risk for iatrogenic ulnar nerve injury jumps to 2.21. That's more than double the risk. And again, it's statistically significant. So there it is, the dilemma in black and white. MLP is definitely more stable, but it also puts the ulnar nerve at significantly greater risk. Okay, so we have a clear trade-off on the two major complications, but what about all the other outcomes we care about? You know, the functional results. Well, this is where things get really interesting because it turns out outside of those two big issues, the techniques are pretty much a wash. When you look at the secondary outcomes, the meta-analysis found no significant difference at all. We're talking excellent Flynn criteria scores, radiographic alignment with Bauman and carrying angles, even things like pin tract infection rates. Across the board, there was no statistical winner. The kids ended up with functionally equivalent outcomes, regardless of the pin configuration. All right, this is where the paper really tries to synthesize these findings and offer a way out of this dilemma. There's a really crucial subgroup analysis that suggests maybe we can have our cake and eat it too, all thanks to a small tweak in technique. So the authors posed a really smart question. They asked, what if we could eliminate the one major downside of MLP? What if we could mitigate that risk to the ulnar nerve simply by making a small incision and directly visualizing the medial pin placement? And this table right here, this is really the key to the whole paper. Look at the first line. For standard percutaneous MLP, the relative risk of nerve injury is 2.44. That's statistically significant. Now look at the second line. When surgeons used a mini open technique for that medial plin, the relative risk drops and look at that p-value, 0.407. It's no longer statistically significant. From a data perspective, the added risk just disappears. So where does this all leave us? What's the final take-home message from this massive meta-analysis? And maybe the most important question for us as clinicians, how solid is the evidence that's driving this conclusion? Well, the authors themselves are pretty clear in their conclusion. They state that using a medial lateral cross pin fixation, but doing it with a mini open technique on the medial side is both an effective and a safe strategy. Basically, you get the stability of the crossed pin construct without paying the price in terms of nerve injury risk. But, and this is a huge but, 
we have to look at the fine print. The authors did their due diligence and ran a great assessment on the evidence. And look at this. For the two outcomes that matter most here, loss of reduction and iatrogenic nerve injury, the certainty of the evidence is graded as very low. Now, that's not a knock on their work. It's a reflection of the quality of the underlying trials, which often had issues with bias and precision. So this really leaves us with a provocative final question for our own clinical practice. The synthesis here, using MLP with a mini open, is a really elegant and compelling strategy. It seems to solve the problem. But we have to be intellectually honest and acknowledge that it's a recommendation built on a foundation of very low certainty evidence. So is this the definitive best practice? Or is it simply the best conclusion we can draw from the imperfect data we currently have? It's a great strategy, for sure, but it also screams for a future high-quality multi-center trial to finally put this question to bed.